Hello and welcome to Launchtime Politics on Channels Television. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. First, the highlights. Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi is calling on President Bola Tinubu to, in the light of what has transpired recently regarding the US court ruling, reintroduce himself to Nigerians. 19 serving councillors of the People's Democratic Party in Kaduna State and their supporters cross carpet to the ruling All Progressives Congress. Plus, cherry news for broadcast stations as the federal government asks the National Broadcasting Commission to review the cost of license fees. Welcome again to Launchtime Politics. We start off with, of course, an interesting one coming from the Labour Party. Well, the party's presidential candidate in the 2023 general elections, Mr. Peter Obi, has called on President Bola Tinubu to reintroduce himself to Nigerians. I'm speaking in light of what has transpired recently, where a United States court ordered the Chicago State University to release the president's academic records at the request of the People's Democratic Party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Addressing a press conference in Abuja today, Mr. Peter Obi asked President Bola Tinubu to again tell Nigerians the schools he attended and if he participated in the one-year National Youth Service Corps scheme. He also wants him to clarify if he indeed changed his name at any time and saved the country from what he called an international embarrassment of identity crisis. Mr. Peter Obi further maintained that having occupied the highest political office in the country, President Bola Tinubu no longer has a right to any privacy regarding his identity. Our President Bola Tinubu has given the Presidential Committee on the Prevention of Floods in Nigeria one week to harmonize and submit its report. This followed an emergency meeting between Vice President Kashim Shatima and governors of the states located in flood-prone areas held at the presidential villa Abuja. The meeting had in attendance Governors Yahya Bello of Kogi State, who is also the chairman of the committee, Governor Bala Mohamed of Bochi State, Governor Francis Mwifuru of Eboni State, and Governor Basi Otu of Cross River State, among others. In an interview after the closed-door meeting, Governor Bello says the report is expected to provide a comprehensive roadmap to address the imminent flood disasters in the country following the release of water from the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon. This is an emergency meeting. There has been various reports, like I said, and that's why this particular committee that I am going to chair will come up with a roadmap within one week so that there can be actionable, um, the plans can be, action, can be actioned so that all of our people that have been ravaged by flood will begin to have a succor. And then still in the roadmap, because there are immediate, medium-term and long-term solutions to all of these problems. So in that particular roadmap that we shall come up with, everything will be put on the table so that eventually we'll have a permanent solution to this uh, flood. This is following the flood of the 2021. When the then Humanitarian Affairs and Social Development Minister, Hadjia Saidia Farouk, direct, was directed by, to, by the establishment of the National Flood Emergency uh, and Preparedness and Response Plan to ensure that we all come together, harmonize various reports. Remember, there's, uh, there are various reports and committees. So we need to harmonize all of these reports now, come up with one roadmap, and then address these various uh, challenges. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Samolu, has called on the executive and the legislature to develop the blue economy in Nigeria by paying greater attention to the sector. In a statement signed by the Chief Press Secretary, Wega Akosile, Governor Samolu said all hands must be on deck to address aggressively reduce the bottlenecks for businesses to thrive in Lagos State, especially in the blue economy sector. 
He was speaking during a courtesy visit by the members of the Senate Committee on Marine Transportation, led by its chairman, Senator Wasiu Eshilokonsani, at Lagos House Marina yesterday. Governor Sawolu urged them to make adequate recommendations and suggestions to the larger body of the Red Chamber on how to move the country forward through the blue economy. On this part, Senator Eshinokonsani said Lagos is indeed critical to the blue economy, noting that the Senate Committee on Marine Transport is visiting because 70% of the activities in the sector take place in the state. Now to the National Assembly, where the Senate says it will invite the service chiefs to deliberate on the issue of oil theft in the country as part of its investigation into the matter. The President of the Senate, Godfrey Lapabio, announced the resolution following the motion moved by Senator Ned Moko during plenary. According to him, Nigeria has lost 65.7 million barrels of crude oil to theft this year. Our correspondent, Kumbi Abuluadi, reports. The rate of crude oil theft in Nigeria formed a major part of the discussion in the Senate on the first legislative day of the week. This figure marks the senator representing Delta North, Senator Ned Woku, begins the conversation when he moved a motion on the urgent need to investigate the incident crude oil theft in the Niger Delta region and its actors. Statistical data, which have been reported over the years, even till date, have shown that oil bunkering has brought Nigeria to, into serious socio-economic crisis, and this remains an intractable challenge to the Nigerian oil-dependent economy. Some lawmakers attribute the illegality to a collaboration between security agencies and non-state actors. The combined total of what you can, be, what you can cut away in drums cannot explain 100, 200, 300, 400, 500,000 barrels per day be stolen. It cannot. This is an organized theft. And those involved in this are protected. However, the president of the Senate asked a joint committee of the Senate to summon the service chiefs on the issue. The committee is expected to report back within six weeks. Meanwhile, the Senate has embarked on the amendment of the National Social Investment Program Agency Act 2023 to move the agency from the purview of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development to the Presidency. The Senate also called for an immediate deployment of troops and other security apparatus to tackle the insurgency and terrorism in Niger State. The decision was taken after a motion moved by Senator Sani Musa. Recall that Madaka Gari, Maikujeri, Magami, Zungeru, Basa, Gusoro, Galadimo, and Kogo, Koki, and Oki villages were all attacked with casualties as more than 46 people were killed, which also included 25 gallant soldiers, mobile policemen, and other security personnel. Many civilians were killed recently, many others unaccounted, with over 2,300 displaced more people displaced. The number of persons said to have been killed by bandits in Niger East and Niger State are over 475 between January 2020 to date. Outside the plenary, the president of the Senate met with a delegation from the United States Embassy in Nigeria. He called for stronger ties with the United States. Kumbi Abuluwadi, Channels Television News. The National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Abdullahi Ganduje, has described as a distraction the judgment of the Federal High Court Abuja, which disqualified the Bayelsa State APC candidate in the November 11th governorship election, Timipri Silva. Reacting to the judgment after a meeting with President Bola Tinubu in the presidential villa, the National Chairman says the party would appeal the judgment, but then asked party members to remain calm. He says he believes the party will get a positive judgment from the appeal court and is confident of winning the governorship election. It's unfortunate that uh, judgment, but we can say that it is democracy in action. But we learned that the person who took the issue to the court of law is not even qualified because he did not contest with the silver. Therefore, he's not even qualified for him to take the issue to the courts. However, we are appealing. We are waiting for the judgment and then 
we appeal for on that issue. Last two weeks, I was in Bielsa for two good days, and uh, I think they were ready, and they are still ready to win the election. Uh, therefore, this is a little distraction anyway, but it will overcome it. We believe the court, will, the appeal court, will give us a positive judgment. So that, uh, but that will not stop us from making arrangement for the forthcoming uh, election, which is coming up on the 11th uh, November 2023. All right, joining me right here on Long Time Politics to discuss more on that situation concerning the uh, APC and regards to the governorship election for Bias State. We're being joined, of course, by Mr. Stanley Damadibe, who is an APC lawyer, uh, to delve into uh, this issue. Uh, great to have you on uh, Long Time Politics. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's start off by looking at this whole situation. I mean, what's your view concerning the judgment that disqualified the APC uh, governorship candidate, Mr. Timmy Pre Silva, in Bielsa State? Yes. Yeah, I must immediately say that it is troubling. Troubling not in the sense that it is something that can be sustained, but troubling with regards to the fact that uh, the surrounding circumstances leading to the judgment are quite suggestive of uncomplimentary and unpleasant things uh, that I, I don't think our judiciary should be associated with at, at this given period, you know. Uh, having said that, you know, the bare facts on the ground suggest uh, that uh, it could have been better. It ought to have been different, given the provisions of the law and uh, every other thing that has to do with this matter. Uh, firstly, we are talking about a man challenging the competence of a candidate who emerged as winner of a primary election conducted by a party, you know, uh, going to court when he did not participate in the primary. You know, I've had, you know, different arguments on this issue, but, but it makes no sense at all. The core issue is this man went to court because he felt uh, Chief Timmy Press Silva ought not to emerge candidate of the APC for the forthcoming gubernatorial elections in, in Bielsa State. Now, how competent is he? What locus does he have to even challenge the process, given the extant laws relating to elections in Nigeria? And then you but go what, further to discover that... But, yes, uh, uh, yes uh, that, uh, my apologies for, for, for coming in, but of course we, we're looking at the situation where the, uh, the Constitution, uh, according to what the... Uh, Federal High Court stated that it would be wrong for the uh, candidate to come back again to contest since he was already a governor at, at some point uh, serving for like five years or, or thereabout. What would you say to that? Well, uh, frankly, I, I, I wonder why we wouldn't understand the difference between de facto situations and de jure situations. Yes, by fact, there was a given period that Chief Timmy Pressover was in office. But by law, that process, that period was nullified because the processes leading to his emergence then was said to be uh, incompetent and all that. And that, that was why a fresh election for which he was not disqualified was ordered and conducted. And so if you're going to compute a period that does not count or does a, that amounts to nothingness in law in judging a time that a man is in occupation of an office, you would have been making a grave mistake, a grave error. De facto situations are different from de jure situations. The law has interpreted uh, whatever computation that has been made, you know, including the period that is served when his election was declared null and void, you know, as something that should not count and shouldn't stand. Like I said in an earlier interview, you do not expect to place something on nothing, you know. You do not put something on nothing and expect it to stand. It's, it's part of the controversies in all of this, yeah. All right, so it's just a month to the election. What's the plan right now for the APC uh, in Bielsa State? The plan is that you do not focus on little distractions because the propagandists, those that are behind the scenes, obviously their target is known. Let's create some distractions and let's see how there will be confusion in the camp. But we are steadfast and we've been talking to our people that, look, this is... Uh, is, 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 is a hit below the belt and it will amount to nothing when it is taken upstairs for review 
by uh, competent courts of jurisdiction, the appellate court and, of course, uh, the apex court. So let's focus on our business. Uh, we know the game plan. It is to create confusion in our midst. We must not uh, fall for that. And, and, and that's just it. Campaigns are going on. The APC is in a Kerama local government area now, you know, interacting and engage, interacting with and engaging, you know, uh, with, uh, with, with electorates. And I, and I can assure you that with better understanding and appreciation of the realities, uh, we, we remain focused. We remain focused and we're looking forward to not just, uh, you know, uh, going through this, but, you know, claiming the deserved victory that will be offered on the 11th day of uh, November 2023. In other words, you're saying that you're very confident that the APC will uh, get uh, the, the, the candidate, uh, Timmy Prisilva, to contest for the election and, and of course, a win so, uh, in that, in, on the poll. On the basis of this judgment, we are so sure of it. We are so sure of it. You know, we are not puzzled at all because there's no reason to be in that state of mind. All right, of course, uh, that will definitely be something we'll be taking a serious look at. Uh, I was going to ask you again, uh, Mr. Stanley, uh, that the person who yeah. filed uh, the, the, this, uh, uh, this case uh, is also an a APC member. How, would you, or how do you feel about this? Well, I, I view membership, from, membership of a political party from two angles. There's membership. By record, by the fact that you are a card-carrying member and your name is in the register of the party. There's also membership by, you know, being really connected, uh, you know, uh, uh, spirit, mind, body and soul and everything. No true party faithful will aim at bringing its party down. It doesn't make sense. It, it does not connect. You know, but these are some of the things, sadly, we see in, in our politics. But, but we know that, uh, you know, uh, sabotage and saboteurs, unfortunately, are still having their ways in, uh, in, our, in our politics. But fortunately, the law has uh, checkmated those kind of uh, uh, situations and persons. And that's why the law said, look, if you're not an aspirant in a party primary election, you cannot, you know, uh, approach the courts to seek remedies with relation to it. We understand all of that. Uh, and, and, and it's going to be appropriately addressed. I, I think the person that should feel bad and sorry for himself is the person who has offered himself to be used for anti-party purposes. Uh, ultimately, I, I don't think it's going to rub off well on such person's uh, standing and integrity. But, but for now, let's face the business of the law and the courts. We are set to reverse the trend on appeal and that's the cost that we believe will be maintained and sustained uh, until the elections are, are held and uh, announced, a victory announced, results announced. All right, Mr. Stanley Damadibi, APC lawyer in Bielsa State, thank you for your thoughts on lunchtime politics. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So ahead of the November 11th governorship election in Imo State in southeast Nigeria, the leadership of the Labour Party has reiterated its commitments to ensuring that its governorship candidate, Senator Athanasio, emerges the next governor. The chief spokesperson of the Obidati Presidential Campaign Council, Mr. Tanko Yunusa, says Senator Achono remains the best candidate for the seat in view of his manifesto. He was addressing the news conference in Abuja on the upcoming poll. We are not unmindful of attempt by some politicians to push into the obedient family and pursue an identity theft agenda. We are aware also that some politi political parties are making efforts to misdirect some of our family members. Two other parties who are contesting in the election, particularly the PDP and the APC, are guilty as charged. We are aware that the intimidating activities of the obedient all over have driven fears into them and thought of confronting these fellow, fellows of the Peter Obi in the November 11 election has thrown spans, spanners into their minds. We are also not unmindful of huge resources being deployed by the state gov government as well as 4,000 fake job promises being offered 
to our members in order to poach them. As lovable as these offers and promises are, the Umo youth are, are much more intelligent and well informed. They can't compromise their future because of these antics of some failed politicians who have ripped the state and have encouraged insecurity for their selfish interests. A new Imo is possible again, a state where peace and security shall be the paramount of the government, a state where the youth will be assured of their future and no fake politi politics promises will be given. All right, when we come back on the program Lunchtime Politics, the broadcast stations of the federal government is asking the National Broadcast Commission to review the cost of license fee for broadcast stations in the country. Join us again. Welcome back. It's still lunchtime politics on channels television. The federal government wants the National Broadcasting Commission, the NBC, to review the cost of license fees for broadcast stations. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mr. Mohamed Malagi, made the call during a courtesy visit to the Commission's headquarters in Abuja. The Minister says the Commission should work towards a downward review of the license fees in view of the economic realities. According to him, Broadcast stations should not bear the burden of funding the commission as he pledges to support the commission. National Broadcasting Commission. I talk, DG, I really did talk about uh, the reduction in the fee of uh, licenses. Uh, perhaps because of where I'm coming from, you have to convince me why that is not possible. And I also convince you why that is also possible. My concern is that it is, it is very possible uh, for license fees to be charged, very high license fees to be charged. I agree. But we need to create an environment that will make the operators within this industry make enough money so that we we'll continue to charge them. How do you charge somebody who is making nothing? You know, at the end of the day, uh, the industry will just uh, will just collapse because without the players, without the stakeholders, there's probably nobody to regulate, you know, there's nobody to oversight them. So, I agree that we need more money. I agree that uh, the NBC needs to make a uh, lot of revenue. But it's also important that uh, the necessary mechanism for the growth of the sector is put in place, and then we can look at those fees and, and, and revisit. it. But for now, I'm still uh, holding my ground that, uh, <laughs> that the licenses fees need to be looked at with a view to reducing them downward. Uh, you need to convince me otherwise why that, that is not feasible. Nineteen serving councillors of the People's Democratic Party in the 23 local government areas of Kaduna State and their supporters have decamped to the ruling All Progressives Congress. Announcing their resignation from the PDP at the news conference, the decampees say they decided to join the APC due to the type of purposeful leadership that has been provided by Governor Ubasani in piloting the affairs of Kaduna since his assumption into office. The DKMPs also appealed to the PDP governorship candidate in the 2023 general election, Issa Ashur, to withdraw his suit challenging the election of Governor Sani at the appeal court and join hands with the governor to move Kaduna State forward. I came here as an organizing secretary to witness this uh, declaration by the 19 elected councillors from Barrios 23 local government and their supporters. Therefore, I want to assure you that, by God's grace, will, APC will carry everybody along. And then I want to assure you that Obasani is a good man. Definitely Obasani will transform Kaduna said by God's grace. Since 2007, I'm not recognized. And all my effort is done in vain. And I don't want to continue working in vain. I have to work for it again. Because after some time, I will die and go. I will have to gain and get something for my children to leave behind. I can't continue to be suffering. So that is why I leave the place. I, I know that Ubasani will transform uh, Kaduna to the highest level. And that's where we draw the curtain on lunchtime politics. Many thanks for watching. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. <laughs>